Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Well, I've just finished loading up plants for the farmer's market. I've been working on them all spring, so I'm pretty excited about getting them out to market and sell them. If you have considered selling plants at the farmer's market before, running a backyard nursery or on a small scale trying to sell plants, then what I'd like to do today is bring you along with me and show you what it's like to sell plants at the farmer's market and take you through some of the considerations. So I will pack up the camera and take you with me and with the plants. Uh, but first I wanted to have a quick conversation about some of just the basics of selling at the farmer's market and some things you might not know if you haven't sold there before. Number one, at a farmer's market, they usually do require that you are the grower of the plant. Also, if you're selling baked goods that you are the baker or if you're selling crafts that you're the maker of those goods. That's what the farmer's market is all about. So you have to be prepared to tell them that you've made these plants yourself, that you've grown the plants yourself. For me that's no problem. I usually propagate all the plants from cuttings myself or grow them from seed. If you do buy in plugs or if you do buy in starter plants, you may have to check with the policies of your local farmer's market to see if that's acceptable to them. The second thing that you need to know is that they want you to declare upfront all the things that you'll be selling at the farmer's market for the season. So when you make that application, just be sure to include all the things. Like I include all of my roses and all of my plants, but I also include cut flowers. If I happen to cut those throughout the season, I include tomatoes because I do a harvest of tomatoes later on. I, I include my squash. So just put the, all of those on your application so you don't run afoul of the market later on. Um, when choosing a market, you have to be a little selective and in my market here or down in the Fraser Valley uh, there's probably oh, 15 16 farmers markets that I could actually drive to and attend if I wanted to sell my plants there um, so what it's paid for me to do is to try out a number of the different farmers markets and see what they're like they can vary a lot each farmers market has their own independent board they have all their own policies usually a policy manual that they expect you to know and some of them are a little more relaxed some of them are a little more you know interested in your success some of them to some of them you're just a number that you're just a vendor um, and they want you to jump through the hoops and make applications and pay fees and and all of that so to know which kind of farmers market you're dealing with you may have to try a few different farmers markets and just see how the fit is for you and your style of business and also how many customers are coming there to buy plants okay that's my quick bit on how to select a farmer's market and some of the basic things you'll know. Let me pack you up now. We'll go down to the farmer's market and I'll show you how I set up, how I tag my plants, and how I do for sales. All right, I'm at the farmer's market now and I brought a bunch of plants. How many plants you bring to market depends a little bit on the week. This week it's sunny, it's Mother's Day, it's the first farmer's market of the season, so I've loaded heavy. I might consider carrying a little bit less on weeks where I'm unsure about how much I'll sell because remember, if you pack it up, you may have to bring it home. Also, just in terms of equipment, you could sort of zoom in over there and see that we bring tents, we bring tables, we bring our tablecloths, our signage, and so on. One thing I don't bring is a chair. And that's a personal preference thing, but I don't like to bring a chair because if I bring a chair, I might consider sitting down. And for me, engagement with the customer is better when I stand up. And that, your mileage may vary on that piece of advice. Some people do a great job, either due to physical limitations, they can't stand all market. So they sit down and they do a great job of engaging with their customers. But for me, standing up, talking to my customers is, uh, is the right way to engage. All right, let me get the tent set up. I'll put down some plants and I'll show you how I price them and how I merchandise them. Okay, wow. My, I've, I've been picked over, I've been shocked, and I have been run off my feet this morning all the way through, but I did want to get a chance to show you how I set up here. This is the inside of my tent here with the signage. And one important step, I think, is to have good picture signage. You can see here that I've put down the vital statistics of the plant, the name uh, both in common and Latin, and some information about how to buy it. That makes it really easy for your customers to know uh, what they're getting. Also really important to have clear signage on pricing, and that helps out a lot. Uh, this market lets me spread out a little bit which isn't a policy that most of them do, but uh, this, this morning they didn't have a vendor beside me, so they just let me take up this space for my roses, which again, I've sold through a ton of my roses already for the day, so that is most excellent. And one thing I do is as I sell plants out, I just leave the tags out so that people can see sort of what they missed, and that uh, makes it easy for the next, uh, 
for the next week that people can come back looking for that plant or at least they can tell me to bring some plants back for them but yeah that's my setup at the farmers market and uh, maybe I will stick in a section here and you don't have to stick around for it on how to make the tags like this one here okay this is the software I use for making my photo tags it's LibreOffice draw over here and I use that because it's free and open source software and so I do like that about it but you can use any kind of um, desktop publishing software I used to use Microsoft publisher and that was fine this will do fine uh, the kind of printing I'm doing here this tag is formatted for 4x6 photo printing uh, so I eventually export it to a JPG file and I'll show you how to do that but basically first thing you have to do is you have to make sure in your format that the page properties say that it's four by six or the equivalent with no margins. And that was the equivalent in centimeters. Um, the way I actually format the tag here is really, really simple. Just the name across the top in one text box. And then the next text box down, I have the description of the plant and then a big picture just so that customers will know what it's going to look like. That's the most important thing, right? Um, now, easy way to use this to make a new tag is to just hit this replace button here. And that will take me through to a file with my pictures in it. And let's say I wanted to change this tag over to Betty Will. And all my tags here are pretty much formatted for uh, square anyway because I probably posted them on Instagram previously so they fit right into this spot that I have here you go across the top you change the name over to Betty Will and then change the specs down below here and you've got a new picture card and once you've reformatted the picture card fully and I'll have to put in a description on that one afterwards then you go down here and instead of hitting save, you say export. And uh, export, you change it to JPG. And hit save. And I'm not going to save it as William Law, but I'll save it as Betty. Hit save. And then what it will do is it will ask you what resolution you'd like it in. Now, if you do it at that 96 pixels per inch, that'll be fairly low resolution. I pump that up to 400 and width of six, which brings it back into proportion. Keep the quality up high and say, okay. And that saves it. Then you can just move that file that you just saved into a directory so you can take that to the regular photo store, uh, you know, any place you get your photos developed, and that will give you a nice, durable, inexpensive picture card so you can sell your plants. All right, back at the farm here. I had a really good day of sales. Run off my feet all day, and I can tell it was a good day because I have a lot less plants coming home than I took to the market probably about 20 or 25 percent of what I loaded in the morning has come back with me today which to my standard is really good what I'll do is I'll take up to you upstairs in a minute I'll count down the money I'll give you some idea of what a good day at the farmers market looks like for me just so you can have some assessment of whether it's worth doing for you um, on the topic of things I did well and things I did not so well at this market uh, one of the things I made a mistake on is somebody came to me uh, in the morning actually almost first thing and said I want this rose and I agreed to hold it for her um, I didn't get her to pay for it right away more customers came throughout the day they all wanted that rose I said no probably three or four times and then the customer never came back for it so bad on me you know, I shouldn't be holding things for people without having them pay for it first so lesson learned I won't be doing that again um, one more thing on the topic of coming home with an empty van which is you know my preference it comes down to pricing strategy and there are a couple of different viewpoints on this i know some other people who sell plants at the farmers market and their goal is to maximize the amount of money or the profit on each individual plant so they don't mind bringing the plant to market two three four times as long as they get the price they'll be asking a good price or a high price for the for the plant and uh, in the end maybe they'll get it but it will take them a bit more time to do so 
For me, my preference is I price a little bit lower. I price sort of on par with what you'd see in the local garden centers or what you'd see in the local uh, mass merchant stores. Um, just for the point of view of, I have other plants on the way. I don't want to be loading stuff up, bringing it home, having to water it, having to de deadhead it, feed it. For the rest of the season, I'd really prefer to just take it to the market one time, price it reasonably, and sell it through. So that's my point of view on pricing. Um, certainly, uh, we can talk about it in the comments if you have a different point of view. All right, let's go up and count the money. All right, time for the countdown here. Uh, I have my float here. I routinely keep $100 in this. So I have some fives and tens here and some coins for the next market. All of that funny Canadian money here. Um, on this side here, this is what I've put, pulled out as my earnings. And I have 100, I have a bunch of 20s, and I counted that off camera. It totals $840 plus a $2 coin, a toonie, and a $1 coin, a loonie. So our total is $843. So that gives you some idea of what you could do selling plants at the farmer's market, or at least what I'm able to do selling plants at the farmer's market at this stage in my business. Um, I will say that this is a good day for me. I mean, this is a, a better than average. It's right at the beginning of the season when plant demand is very high. And it's also, uh, I had lots of plants to sell. So um, that's a good day. And uh, now that I've aired it on uh, YouTube, I'm sure Revenue Canada is just waiting for me to enter it into my accounting software so I can place, pay some taxes on it. So I'm gonna go do that now. If you have any questions about how to sell plants at the farmer's market or anything to do with selling plants, Please drop those below the video and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks.